let's move on to the next of our building systems at this point. So now that we have our fresh air ventilation system modeled and working, we have all of our fresh air ventilation unit and ducting in, let's turn our attention to the domestic hot water system. That's the next system, which I think will be really important for, for our purposes here. And um, we'll take a few minutes to take a look at the uh, tools that we have in the PassFouse Tools toolkit here, the Ladybug Tools to PHPP exporter to create our domestic hot water system. So first of all, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at where we are at, and let's take a look at our PHPP and sort of see where, where things stand. So um, if you've been following along, hopefully you have a model that looks something like this, where we've got all of our geometry and our PHPP spaces flowing in. We, we just built our fresh air ventilation system in the last video. That uh, honeybee model with all of its uh, attendant parameters is flowing through, and then we're branching that off and exporting the honeybee model out to the PHPP. So let's take a look at our PHPP and let's see where we, uh, let's see how far along we are, see what we are going to need to enter for our domestic hot water. So I'm going to come over here to the exporter and I'm just going to set this to true. So I've been leaving this off during the working session here, mostly just to speed up these recordings. Of course, you can leave it on as you work, it's not going to hurt anything. Um, but uh, I've been turning it off. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and let it export. And uh, once this is done uh, booting up uh, Excel, uh, we will take a look at our output there and see, again, what kind of um, what kind of results or input we're going to need for our domestic hot water system. So let me come over here to Excel and we'll open up, oops, open up the PHPP. So here's our PHPP, which is all streaming out of our honeybee model. And if we were to go to verification, uh, notice that we're getting some results here. We got our TFA, we're getting some heating demand, heating load. Now, none of this isn't quite accurate yet. We, we don't have any hot water system modeled and certainly our primary energy is not accurate. We haven't modeled any mechanical systems yet. So you can ignore those for now, but it, well, at least we are getting some good results. And obviously now we just need to refine these and make sure that we're entering all the right information. So let's take a look at the domestic hot water. So I'm going to scroll to the right here on our tabs and let's take a look at the domestic hot water and distribution worksheet in the PHPP. And let's take a look at what types of inputs we're going to be asked to input. So the first section up here, this is all for um, uh, hydronic heating systems, you know, radiators. Uh, we're not going to have those in this particular project, so we don't need to worry about anything here. Uh, down below, we have the first of our sort of more traditional domestic hot water inputs here. We have a bunch of inputs for um, the usage profile. We'll come back and take a look at that uh, as well uh, later. So we've got usage profile information. We've got domestic hot water distribution information. This um, referring, and this this uh, upper panel here, referring to circulation piping. So circulation piping, um, you know, recirculation hot water systems uh, um, in order to get the hot water closer uh, to the tap location. So um, we'll look at how we can enter some information here. Obviously, we can enter up to five banks of uh, circulation piping here. And then down below, we have our individual pipes, so our sort of branch level piping uh, would all get entered here. And again, we get the sort of five, um, five input sections uh, here. And then lastly, down at the bottom, we've got our storage losses. Uh, so we've got storage systems, the ability to enter up to one, two, and three hot water tanks. So these would be the actual tanks. If we have a tank in our hot water system, we can add the tank here. Uh, and we've got a bunch of settings that we can set. Okay, so somehow we have to figure out and how to set all of this up. Let me turn this off. Somehow we have to figure out how to set all of that up here in our grasshopper definition. Obviously, we want to get all that data from this one building information model. Now let me zoom out a little bit and come over to our fresh air ventilation section. And the way that the domestic hot water is going to work is it's going to work very similar to the fresh air vent. Meaning, we're going to create a system, we're going to add that system to one or more honeybee zones. We can have more than one system in our model if we want. If we have a complex building with multiple domestic hot water systems, one for the lobby, one for the upper stories, etc., uh, you know, that would be fine. Um, so we're going to build a system. We're going to add that system to one or more honeybee models or, or excuse me, uh, rooms. And then we're going to pass that along in our chain here. And then obviously we'll have a bunch of components that will allow us to actually configure the various pieces of equipment in our, our system.
So I'm going to make some room here. I'm going to actually build, you can build your system pretty much anywhere. I'm going to build it right after my fresh air ventilation um, and before we send everything off to the honeybee model. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make myself a little bit more room and I'm going to just copy one of these, give ourselves a new sort of section here. And let me copy this and we're going to call this domestic hot water. DHW, domestic hot water. All right. So we want to model a new system. How are we going to do that? It's relatively straightforward. I'm going to come up here to my pH tools ribbon, come to O1 model. And in O1 model down here, we have a whole section which is dedicated to domestic hot water. So notice here we have the ability to model piping, uh, branch piping, uh, recirculation piping. We can uh, create a whole system. We can add a tank. We can modify the usage profiles and schedules, etc. All of that can be done here using these tools. So the first thing we want to do is we want to add a new system to the canvas. So I'm going to come over here to my domestic hot water system. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to add that to the canvas. And let's zoom in and take a look at what we have here. So this component is going to create a new domestic hot water system. And notice it's going to take as input um, name, uh, usage. So a usage profile can be entered, uh, design forward temperature. Some circulation piping can be entered, some branch level piping, then some tank information. So just like the, just like the uh, domestic hot water section in the PHPP. So we're going to enter a bunch of component pieces here. They'll all get combined together and then applied to one or more honeybee rooms. So let's go ahead and hook up our honeybee rooms first of all. So I'm going to take this honeybee rooms, I'm going to add it to the honeybee rooms. And then notice that the output here is honeybee rooms, but they have been modified. So let's take a look and just be explicit about it. Right? So we've got our two rooms, second floor, first floor, but these have been modified. This new system has been added to those rooms. And so all we need to do is pass this along to the next link in the chain, and then this will flow through all the rest of our, all the rest of our components here. All right, so a new uh, sort of um, default system has been applied. What do we get when we create a default system? Let's take a look. And so I'm just connecting a panel to the out. And so you can see it's been assigned to the second floor and the first floor. So the honeybee rooms we input, we have no tanks. We have no branch piping. We have no circulation piping. We have no usage and we just get a default name. All right, so by default, we don't really get much useful information here. Um, we get sort of a blank. Uh, you know, set of parameters. So nothing, nothing really useful, nothing that's going to change our PHPP is going to get written yet. We need to add some information here. We need to add some component pieces in order to get this system to actually register in order to get some information to show up in our, our PHPP. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to actually do this so that we can see what's happening. Let me make this a little smaller. And I'm going to do this so that we can see what's happening. I'm going to turn on my PHPP so that each of the component pieces we add will register uh, in our PHPP so that we can kind of see what, um, see, see what happens as we add new pieces. And um, let's take a look at what happens. So right now I'm just turning on my PHPP and exporting everything just as we were looking before, except that we do have this new system. Let's see what gets added with just the default system. We'll see what kind of pieces get configured or, or set up there. So by default, let me open up this. And OK, so we're in our domestic hot water and distribution. So nothing got written to the tank section. So we're in the tank section here. Uh, nothing got written to the pipe section. Nothing got written to the recirculation system. We got a design forward temperature. That's about it. Nothing got written anywhere else. So the only things that get written with the basic system are just the, the temperature, the design forward temperature. Let me set this to true as well. So okay, so we don't get any useful information there. Um, let's um, let's start adding some new component pieces, and let's let's see what happens when we add those pieces. Okay, so come over here, come back to our domestic hot water. So I'm back in my domestic hot water section here. And what do we want to add first? Well, first of all, let's add a tank. That's maybe the simplest piece. So let's add a single hot water tank. So that, um, so that we can consider the heat loss of that tank as part of our overall energy consumption and our um, overheating risk, uh, cooling demand, et cetera, et cetera. So to build a tank, it's quite straightforward. We just come up here to our pH tools, and we come to O1, and then we come down and we're, we add a domestic hot water tank. And we'll drop that onto the canvas, and 
me come over a little bit. Let's take a look at what, what kind of inputs we have. So we've got a tank here. Uh, if we want to see the parameters of the tank, we can take a look at its output here. Let's see what we have by default. Um, it's a, not a storage tank. It's got no information, no volume, no heat loss rate, no anything. All right, so it's a blank. It's sort of a blank uh, tank by default. So we don't really get any information there. So we have to enter some information. So first of all, what type of tank? Well, if we hover our mouse over the tank type here, you can see that the options are zero, no storage tank, one, domestic hot water and heating, or two, domestic hot water only. So I'm going to do one which is a two, domestic hot water only. And I'll input that as the type of tank. And notice now that that changes our type to two, domestic hot water only. Now, we're not going to hook it up to a solar system, so we'll leave solar as false or leave it off. Uh, we do have to, and we should, enter a heat loss rate. So heat loss rate, what should that be? Um, that should be something like 4 watts per meter Kelvin. If you hover over, notice the default should be something like 4. That's a good number. Obviously, we can calculate that number. We could get that number from the manufacturer specifications, etc. Um, but uh, we can just use, we'll just use a default 4 for now. Ourselves a little more room here. It's a little, feeling a little crunched here. There we go. Um, what else? Okay, so that's our heat loss rate. Now we certainly need a volume. You know, how, how big is the tank? Um, and uh, we could input that. Uh, technically, if we hover over, see, we're going to want that in liters. Um, but you can, of course, come in and say something like 80 gallons. And if you input 80 gallons, Notice that will convert over to, it's about 300 liters, just a little over 300 liters. So we'll call this gallons. Um, OK, fine. And then what about the rest? What about standby fraction? Well, we should definitely put something there. That's the, you know, the, um, what we're doing to get into all of it. Uh, just put in 0.3. If you want to know what all this stuff is about, you can take a look at the PHPP um, manual for a bunch more information about you know how to how, what all the details of these inputs are we're just going to sort of use the defaults for now notice here default 0 0.3 30 percent that's fine uh, location we'll leave it as inside location temperature doesn't matter because it's inside so we've got a bunch of useful information here for our tank so as soon as I hook this tank up, so I'm going to take the storage tank output and I'm going to hook it up to tank number one in our system. And as soon as everything there has updated and all that data has flowed through, it's going to, it should show up in our PHPP if everything is working correctly. So let's scroll down to the bottom and there we go. There's our first tank, domestic hot water. It's got a four watts per, oh, watts per Kelvin. No, it's watts per meter Kelvin. There's no meters. Uh, right, watts per Kelvin, uh, 303 or 302.8 uh, uh, liters, 80 gallons, 30% uh, standby fraction. Uh, it is inside, and so we don't need to worry about temperature. And if I zoom out a little bit, notice over here on the right, we are now getting a uh, heat loss value or uh, 420 kilowatt hours per year, a heat loss value associated with that tank, given those parameters. Now, we could add uh, up to two more tanks. That would be fine. Uh, for our purposes, let's just say that we just have a single domestic hot water tank and leave it at that for now. So OK, so there's our tank. So uh, that's pretty good. What about the rest of the pieces here? Uh, we've got some other elements. Let me delete this. Uh, all right, so there's our tank. Uh, what about the other? What about the other pieces here? What about things like the circulation piping and the branch piping? Well, we could, for instance, come up here to our pH tools, come into O1, and come down, and let's let's add some branch piping. So I could just drop this branch piping on, and um, let's see, what do we get by default out of this guy? We get like nothing. We get nothing. We get. Uh, there's no, there's a zero length. We do get, so it's a, so it's half inch, you know, 0.127 um, uh, meters, so 12.7 uh, millimeters. Uh, it's a half inch, so it's, so it's set to, to half inch by default, but it's a zero length. Uh, so that doesn't really help us. So let's give it some, um, let's give it a length. Let's say that we've got, I don't know, what, 10 meters of um, branch piping. And if we just feed that in, notice we get 10 meters. Of course, I could reset the diameter if I don't want to use half inch. If I want to use, you know, three eighths inch or something like that, that would be fine. I could I could change any of those parameters. But um, let's say that we've got like a total. We'll call this like um, total length in meters. Uh, right. So that's 
So that's like our total length of branch piping. And so I could then take my branch piping and I could hook my branch piping up over here. And as soon as all of that flows through, so all this information is flowing into our system, our system is updating itself on all of the honeybee rooms that it's associated with. And then it's pushing all of that out to the PHPP. So if we come up here now, take a look, we've got our individual branch piping elements. So they're, you know, half inch diameter, uh, point, you know, point, point 0.013, point 0.0127, um, meters, uh, 10 meters of total aggregate length. Uh, there's one tap point, six tap points per person per day, 365 days a year of usage. Okay, so that's all flowing through. So, so that's good. So, you know, we can build it that way. And we could do, let me delete this, we could do the exact same thing with a recirculation system. So if I come in here to 01 model, come down to um, research, oops, research system, I could do the exact same thing with a recirculation system. I could say, well, it's, you know, 15 meters long and that'll give me a sort of that'll give me a sort of standard um, you know it's a it's an inch di assuming an inch diameter and an inch of insulation sort of typical circulation system so that would be fine I can feed that into the recirculation system there if I have a recirculation system you know not every project has a, a research system but if we do um, that would that would get fit in there um, so we can say that it's you know 15 meters, and then uh, if I come into my hot water, notice up here I've got 15 meters this is my recirculation system. So I get a recirculation system. Uh, nominal width of the pipe. I guess we should make those. Those are just. Oops! Stop it. Sorry. Those are just. Uh, it's just a viz viz problem there. There we go. Uh, Oh, we got a we got a unit mismatch there. Glad I noted that. That should be point. That should be twenty five, or twenty five point four. Um, so by the time you get this, uh, this should be this should be corrected in your version. So uh, these are in millimeters, and um, here we go. All of that is flowing through nicely, and we're getting our um, total heat loss for the project there, or for the circulation system there. So. Um, so that's one method. So right, so we can get all of that information into our into our PHPP in that manner. And of course, we can come in and we can set any of these values here in the Grasshopper side. Uh, when we come back in the next video, I will show you an alternate method, as as you could ex as you might expect based on everything we've done so far. Um, I actually prefer to do a lot of this work back in the Rhino side. I like to just draw it and enter all that information in the Rhino side. So we'll see how that works, and we'll see how we can pull all that information in um, by referencing in some curve geometry uh, into these uh, components here. So we'll come back in the next uh, video, and we'll take a look at uh, how that part works.